All right, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to another mock offseason episode. We're going to be doing our second one here into the 2024 offseason. We're going to be doing the team with the number two pick in the 2024 draft, the Washington Commanders. So the 2023 Washington Commanders went 4-13. and They had the 25th ranked offense in the NFL, and they had the dead last 32nd ranked defense. They sold Chase Young. They sold off Montez Sweat at the deadline, and they blamed it on Jack Del Rio, who also got fired, but the defense didn't get any better. They fired Ron Rivera, who went 26-40 and 40 in his four seasons as the commander's head coach. Uh, they traded away, obviously, like I mentioned before, just kind of the pending edge rushers, and that team definitely needs some defensive help. They ushered in a new ownership group led by Josh Harris after Dan Snyder sold the team, which is probably the most positive thing about this team's franchise in a while. They brought in Adam Peters as a new general manager from the San Francisco 49ers, and they recently have hired their next head coach, and Dan Quinn from the Dallas Cowboys. And they also hired um, the most recent offensive coordinator at USC and former Cardinals head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. So what is going on, guys? How we doing? What's up, Tom? What's up, Dom? What's up, guys? You guys see the, uh, I think it was the Athletic that uh, posted it, that Ben Johnson, like his agent, like canceled the meeting when the commanders were on the plane to Michigan. Yep. <laughs> yeah, kind of kind of messed up. I, and I didn't see that, actually. So it's like, wait, so agent was like we're not doing it like well i guess because he agreed to stay in detroit they're already like, on the way over there yeah, yeah pretty much and they canceled it like while they were in the air which apparently they were not happy about that and it's weird though like it's still been a story about ben johnson like he didn't get so, a job yeah but the one flip side so like they were also going to interview uh aaron glenn i believe so it mm -hmm. wasn't an empty-handed trip to detroit they still did something but yeah it was pretty mm -hmm. weird that just as they're on their way he's like never mind i'm gonna stay in detroit yeah honestly i thought this was going to be the team to make a splash. I mean, uh, I predicted Ben Johnson, and none of us predicted Dan Quinn, right? Nope. No, I, I predicted Dan Quinn for the Seahawks. Same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they go with Dan Quinn, which isn't that exciting, but he's had success as a head coach before, at least, in Atlanta. And you mentioned it. Their defense was so bad last year that even you have to hope that his main goal is to just improve the defense. And like you mentioned, he was – Brought the Falcons to a Super Bowl. I like, can't overlook that. So I think it's uh, it might be overlooked now, but I think we'll see this team improve pretty quick. Definitely. So uh, this team is expected to have a ton of cap space. Uh, there's a good chance that they can reach up to like 80 some odd million dollars in free agency, uh, which obviously is going to be kind of top of the, the league. And they are in need of a quarterback. So we're pretty much just going to go through re-signings, uh, free agency, and who we think they could take on day one or day two. Do we think they can make any trades? Um, and uh, they're still without a DC right now. Do you guys like the idea of like Cliff Kingsbury coming in? I'm sure like they, I'm sure want like a more aerated passing attack. We expect it to be Drake May. Did you guys have any gripes about that or you thought it was cool? I think it's fine for an OC. I we know he's not a great head coach, but at the end of the day, he still is a pretty creative offensive play caller. So, you know, he's ready to get back in the NFL. I'm cool with it. And mm -hmm. for uh, content purposes, it's great because for the next two and a half months now, we're just going to hear the Caleb Washington yep. Cliff Kingsbury connection, just all three of those together. Yep. And it, so, th so it's going to be rumored to trade up for the next however many. Yeah. Maybe, so. Maybe weeks. It w I mean, it would be cool, but I just still don't see Chicago trading the pick. Um, and it's funny that it's looking like that they may have two UNC quarterbacks on their roster next year. Um, I saw they were both at the, the Duke game yeah. as well. So, <laughs> which that is definitely, funny. Sam Howell's probably not happy to be hanging out with Drake May. I was going to say, that has to be a little awkward just because even if Sam Howell's not looking at the draft board or not looking too much into it, he knows that May is going to be a top three pick most likely, and his current team has a top three pick. So it has yeah. to be awkward in some some sort, no matter what. And it's mm -hmm. also, he also probably has to be some sort of like pit in his stomach that Mitch obviously went second in 2017. And then he was like, it was him and Spencer Rattler that were like the 1A and 1B in 2022 for that, dra for that uh, draft process. And they both just were straight up bad. And they went up. Spencer Rattler is obviously still in college, and um, Howell wound up falling to the third round, fourth round. So fifth, I think. Fifth. Yeah. So huh. May literally the expectations of being that top uh, North Carolina draft prospect, and Howell just is the guy caught up in the middle of the three who's going to be out of a job, I guess, in a few months. <clears throat> yeah. Um, 
so yeah, that, it's just funny because like yeah, UNC hasn't really produced that many quarterbacks. It seems like over time. So um, for a team that is pretty much on paper right now, having eighty three million dollars in cap space, and that's before any restructures. That's before anybody gets cut. Um, so do we have any like notable cut candidates like straight off the bat? Um, Dom, do we have any? Yeah, so, yeah. One guy I was looking at. So when talking about, I think you mentioned their offense was twenty fifth last year. They also, if you remember at the beginning of the year, they were giving up sacks like crazy. They eventually figured it out, but they were still second most sacks allowed. Um, so I think that means they'll probably go after Lyman in free agency. And their current left tackle, Charles Leno, he he's projected to make 15 mil next year, but his dead cap's only 8 mil. So if they want to cut him, they could save almost half his contract, which would be about 8 mil. They'll save free agent next year as well. Yeah, and he is 32. So... To me, it seems like there's a gr- good chance he's cut. I mean, again, we've mentioned this team is $83 million already. So if they're content with him staying for one more year, it's not like they necessarily need the money. But when you have to improve and get younger, you might as well save $8 million on top of it. Mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah. uh, do we think Logan Thomas would get cut or he'd get brought back? They would save $7 million, but he was a nice safety blanket. He was, he was decent last year. And I feel like a veteran tight end safety blanket is pretty key for, uh, for a yeah. QB. Because he's a yeah. rookie, so I think they might want to keep him around. Maybe maybe they'll restructure it or he'll take a pay cut because he's he's really what almost ten years now at this point. I probably say so. He's he's got his money, and maybe he want to take like a veteran type role. And the that thing with like him he's is he's thirty three this year as the last year of his contract, and he yeah, wouldn't I, save any dead cap from from cutting him. Sorry, I don't I keep cutting you off. No, you're good. I just don't see a reason for this specific team to cut Logan Thomas. Yes, they'd almost save his entire contract, but. This team has so much money. It's not like they're really trying to save anything. And you mentioned he's a good, reliable veteran tight end. I feel like he probably will be safe. Now, if this team had only, let's say, only $30 million with all their current problems, then I'd say he probably gets cut. But I feel like he probably gets to stick around for this last year. Yeah, for sure. And I, I don't think he's really a hot commodity on the free agent market to where he's going to get scooped up. by Like, he, he, his agent's probably like, you're making decent money if they don't cut you. Like, just... Like just stick, like just be happy to stick around. You're making good money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, notable free agents. We assume like maybe Jacoby Brissett. I mean, like they could probably use another veteran. But do you want to have like three quarterbacks tied up with? I mean, like Howell's making next to nothing. But I, I think it's not a bad idea to bring back Brissett. I think we could probably assume Curtis Samuel's gone. I mean, they have uh, Jahan Dotson. They spent a first round pick on. They paid Terry McLaurin. I feel like if they're going to get another receiver option, it could be a more veteran or maybe a maybe a day three guy. Um, I think two notable free agents we got to figure out if they want to bring back are in the secondary, Kendall Fuller and Cameron Curl. Curl started uh, 16 games for them last year and then 15 for Fuller. Um, Both veterans on the team, I feel like maybe Fuller has a better chance of coming back, Um, but obviously you're going to be paying him into his uh, age 30 years. Do you guys think that they are going to try to bring back both of them, one of them, or neither of them? I think, I mean, I do like Fuller, but I feel like he's, he might be less likely just because what they currently have. Like, they used a first-round pick on Emmanuel Forbes last year, and he wasn't really that good, but... Uh, no, he was bad. <laughs> but you can't they just took move... him above Christian Gonzalez, too. Yeah, so... Because uh, Giants Twitter was always back and forth because him and Tay Banks were selected, like, back-to-back. So they are always comparing them, and he was not good. I've seen a lot of stuff on Emmanuel Forbes, and... No, <laughs> you don't want him. I mean, yeah, but you still... He was a first-round pick last year. Like, you're not just going to toss him out. You still have at least three more years with him, probably. So I assume he'll be starting at least as one spot. Uh, Jortavius Martin's under contract for three more years. He wasn't really that bad. I just took a look at his stats. If they can Mm -hmm. get Kendall Fuller back for a reasonable deal, I can see him coming back. But I don't know if he is their main focus right now. They're saying his market value is about $14 million, three for 42. I mean, that's pretty... That's like up there for safeties nowadays, but I feel like with every extension is going to be a new like Jesse Bates got a bag, didn't he? Mm-hmm. From the yeah, Falcons he did. last year. Yeah, yeah. And also, while exactly. we're still on the topic of like uh, salary and stuff, what is Nick Gates doing making five million dollars a year? Maybe I'm less very like in the in the know of how annoying he is to have on your team because of the Giants, but great injury comeback stories and everything, but straight up not good lineman. He somehow is making almost six million dollars a year, so he could be cut. I think he should have been cut yesterday. Uh, they save no money by cutting him, so... It doesn't maybe. matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'll see. So yeah, both both curls and Fuller's market value, uh, according to Spot Tracks, around fourteen million dollars. I mean, they have the money. I feel like yeah, with a decent amount of corners on the roster, maybe they up for curl because they don't really have another safety outside of like Derek Forrest. So I think I would if I had to choose between the two. I mean, I feel like I'd maybe go with Cameron Curl just I because would... of like the positional need, unless they're going to target safety in free agency. Yeah, I think Cameron Curl. I mean, you just take a look at it. First of all, he was a seventh round pick. He's had a very good four year start to his career for being for sure. a seventh round pick. For sure. Uh, I mean, last season he had 115 tackles, and who I don't know if Dan Quinn is going to fully change their scheme and everything. But if you know you can have a young, reliable guy at the back end of your secondary, I feel like you want to keep him there, especially. Um, considering, but then again, as I say all this, Washington did have the worst passing defense last year, so maybe he's not that good. But uh, <laughs> he was really good as a rookie. I remember. Uh, so it was a big story when Washington like won the NFC East that year. Yeah, so I think maybe maybe they should focus just to keep some continuity on that back end of the defense. But as I as I just logically talk about it, we're talking about how bad their defense was last year, and now we're saying they should retain their guys. It seems a little <laughs> counterintuitive. Yeah. Um, well, I think a big reason your pass even could be so bad is when you when you have two pass rushers like Mont- Montez Sweat's actually good. Chase Young is still on. Is he good? Maybe. Um, like it's much more difficult for your corners if you have zero pass rush. Like yeah, that's a good point. He, he's gonna have an extra half a second every play. That's obviously everything in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so uh, at least just we'll go back to that in a second. But like we're definitely gonna let Antonio Gibson walk unless he came back for free. There's probably no point in bringing him back. Um, yeah, especially as the Brian Robinson had a good Brian game Robinson was actually pretty good in the receiving game, too, and that's basically what Gibson was used for. Yeah, Gibson's still fumbling as well. And they, have, and they drafted Chris Rodriguez as well, so they have at least uh, some youth in the backfield. Um, all right, so I know. I, I feel like it's kind of like a catch-22 there, Dom. Like, we kind of want to spend money on the secondary, but were these guys so bad that we want to bring them back <laughs> and just kind of that contributed to the terrible defense? Um I don't know. Curl's 24. Fuller's 28. Like, I feel more comfortable giving Curl an extension than Fuller. I agree. All right. So do we want to... I mean, this is a team that has so much cap space. Like, we have around $90 million. So even if we docked up 60 or 30 million of those two, we still have 60 million to spend. Yeah, but they don't... Like, we talk about it, like, we don't have to spend all of it. Like, you maybe... No, we don't. They're they're going full rebuild. Like, they're gonna... And they still need probably, what, 15 million for uh, draft picks? Yeah, it's amazing, so. amazing to get like this, eight or nine. I'm, I'm pretty sure this factors in draft picks, unless I'm wrong. But if you, I'm pretty sure Spot Track uh, uh, accounts for it. I might be wrong, oh, really? but I think they, I think they do. Um. Yeah, if you go, if you go to their, if you're on their salary cap, they have a specific section for the 2024 cool. projected draft pool. So yeah, their number two pick would be about six and a half million dollars next year. Jeez, that's actually not bad at all. Um, all right, so do we, I mean, if anybody is that passionate, we could bring back Cameron Curl and not Kendall Fuller? I'm fine with that. I'm fine. I'd rather bring back Cam Curl than Kendall Fuller. And like we said, 32nd ranked defense or 31st ranked defense, <laughs> l- 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 let's add a new head coach who's a defensive head coach. He's probably not going to keep both those guys. Yeah. Um, okay, so obviously we're not going to really bring in any quarterbacks because we expect them to draft one at number two. Running back, I don't, like, it's a great running back class. Could this be a team that wants... Also, I want to mention new owner syndrome. This happens all the time. All the time that a new owner wants to make some type of move. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay. It was. I was trying to think what owner just recently did this. The Baltimore Orioles, new, or, uh, new owner group, <laughs> immediately trades for Corbin Burns. It's a thing. And I feel like... I mean, if they had a chance, they would trade for Caleb Williams at number one, but they might not even have the opportunity. So I feel like they're going to want to make some splashy signings. So I could definitely see this team honestly signing a running back. I And I think they're in the perfect situation because we always say never pay running backs. But when you have this much uh, money just sitting out there and you mentioned how good the running backs that are out there, you might as well just spend some for fun. Like, sure, it's probably mm-hmm. going to be a bad contract. You probably you might not like it in two or three years, but I'm not expecting it to be a four or five year contract. It's probably going to be like two or three years. Yeah, but I'm, I'm looking at it. Is the running back class good or is there a lot of big names on it? Because I don't like, I don't know. I, I think I it's think, good compared to most years, I think. Okay, all, right, all right, compared to most years, yes, because better than last year for sure when Miles Sanders was, was the big splash. Yeah. Um, but now, like, like Derrick Henry, I, I have no idea where Derrick Henry's going to go. Like, I mean, just logically thinking, like, I know Brian Robinson did improve this past year. I still don't really have much faith in him whatsoever, if we're being completely honest. Like, if I would give Saquon, I, doubt, I don't think Derrick Henry would come to this team, but giving Saquon 
taking a shot on Pollard, whose value significantly dropped this year, you can get him for cheaper and try that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they could be a team that's in the running back market. I think Saquon's going to be a charger, I guess. Ooh. With what money? (laughs) (laughs) Um, They'll they'll, they'll figure, they'll they'll make it work. They always do. Yeah, I feel like... I feel like for Jacobs, Pollard, and Barkley, definitely fits their timeline a little bit more. Um, I would stay away from Eckler. I don't really think he's that much better than Brian Robinson. But I would be willing to to pay Jacobs and Pollard. And obviously, coming up and down here for Pollard, this would be a nice kind of buy low. You get him in the rest of his 20s. I feel like it's probably worth it. And then your team looks a little bit more exciting having Robinson as the two and Rodriguez as the three than having them at the one and the two. And and I feel like it could be good for Pollard like if he's in... Yep. Him and Brian Robinson could share roles a little bit because Pollard was really good when he was still technically Zeke's backup, but it was really more of a split. But when he became like the guy, you could tell he just couldn't hold. He couldn't hold all the uh, responsibility. So I think if he splits with Robinson like a 70-30 kind of thing, we good. And he he does know Dan Quinn. How I was just he, gonna say how, <laughs> yeah. how much he knows. I don't. I'm gonna assume not a lot. But hey, they were both in Dallas. <laughs> all right, so I think sure. sh- straight off the rip, we could sign Tony Pollard. I feel like it's a deal that. Could be four years, but it's realistically like a two-year deal, and it pays them a decent amount of money now while they can afford that because they have guys on rookie deals. What's his? Yeah, what's his, his, his the market value uh, is that like thirteen. Yeah, it's like cheap. it's so cheap. I feel like the running backs will get a little bit more. Like I feel like spot tracks get a value like or devalue the running back position, but it just it just depends who the first guy to sign is and how much he gets. Dude. That that's what's going to do it because if Pollard gets the first contract, he makes like eight mil. Saquon's be like, I want ten. I mean, I'm looking at the comparisons. Six and a half seems actually pretty fine for Pollard because he was not great last year. Um, Miles Sanders signed for about six and a half last year. Montgomery was six mil. I think Pollard honestly proved that he's in that tier and not in the next tier. Yeah, he's in like that 12 to 16 maybe. If that, maybe like pushing 20. And honestly, I'm looking through this running back class. There's there's a decent amount of good running backs. Like you have Zach Moss, you have J.K. Dobbins coming off an injury, you'll have Cam Akers coming off an injury. You got DeAndre Swift. Dobbins have been in the league four years. That's crazy. Like I've seen him play five games. I know. You have DeAndre Swift. Obviously, he just played behind a really good old line. You have a lot, um, Murray. Yeah, there's how there's a lot of good running backs out here. How is Zeke only 28 and a half? I crazy. feel like he should be like 33. <laughs> I, I do we just sign Pollard and Zeke? That would be, that'd be funny. <laughs> that would be very funny. Uh, I'm cool. I'm cool giving Pollard like a four year deal, but it's realistically like an out after two. Pays him a decent amount of money now. He gets sixteen million guaranteed. Yeah, like four for I don't know twenty or like four for like thirty three, something like that. And then like, but but it's really like and. It's bad. It's front loaded, and you get like 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 sixteen or seventeen million dollars guaranteed, and then out after two years. It's pretty much that's pretty much how it's gonna look. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd if, be fine for him. Okay, I mean, um, would be a decent contract for them. Yeah, the money they have. So we'll sign. We'll sign Tony Pollard. Unless you guys want to sign a receiver, but I'm cool. Like, kind of letting that be. They can figure out who wide receiver three is gonna be. Unless you guys want to make a big splash there. No, I think um, I don't I, think anybody. No, I think I think they're going to keep Terry. He's already making a lot of money. They're probably going to want to add a receiver in the draft. And I think yeah, with I think. their makeup, Terry's their wide receiver one. I guess he could maybe slide to a two. But Jahan Dotson, they used a first round pick on. He's got to at least be considered close to a wide receiver two. So I think they're they would only go for like a top ten available wide receiver in my opinion. I don't think there's currently one available. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't think, like, Kendrick Bourne or Cedric Wilson is going to add anything enough to the team to, like, make it worthwhile. I mean, they'd probably rather just take a shot on somebody in the second or third round. They have an extra second round pick from the Montez Sweat trade. Yes. And an extra third from the Chase Young trade, I think. Or fourth? The fourth conditional, maybe? Something like that. I know that. they have five top 100 picks because they have two, 36, 40, and then, like, 67 and 100, I think. You just yeah two thirty six forty sixty seven a hundred uh, yeah and then, then hundred too in, so they have six in my picks in, in my first pre video process I was uh, I wrote the, I wrote the mock <laughs> yeah so they have a lot man this commander's off season honestly is gonna be pretty fun like I, are they are they going to be next year's worst to first team just one every year I don't know I don't know man <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like um who's the one team that I think that can be um wait who was the it's gotta be. Would it be the fa- no, not the no? Not it'd be the Panthers. Not gonna uh, be the Panthers. The Titans. No. Oh. Patriots. 
Oh, the Bengals. It's the, Bengals. Yes, the, the Bengals. Chance, the Bengals chance, are definitely good, the obvious, but I mean, yeah. the Chargers maybe, but the Chiefs aren't going to lose the division. They never will. Yeah, um, Chargers. Chargers are always like the off-season darling, and then. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I honestly could see this team signing like a. Yeah. I actually think they could sign like a DJ Chargers as a wide receiver three, but I feel like it's not notable enough that we'll go after. I mean, the tight end market. I feel like nobody here is really that much better than Logan Thomas to dish out guaranteed money to. Um. So I feel like we got to address O line. Um, I feel like yeah. we should probably sign at least one notable name, at least, maybe two. Um, I mean, they could go for some of the top guys on the market as well. Obviously, I don't really think they're getting like Tyron Smith, um, but like Connor Williams, they could pay a bag too. Um, I, I doubt Miami's going to be able to afford him. They could look at Jonah Williams as well. Um, do you guys have any specific? Do you think names? Kevin Zeiler would want to? I don't know if I don't. I don't know if I think he probably would rather go to him. I feel like yeah, he's because he's going to be 34 next year. Um, the one thing that concerns me looking at the free agent tackles, there's not like a huge game changer, in my opinion, that's available. Like, I feel like this commander's team, they would have been the team to hand out the $20 million left tackle contract, but I just don't see a guy that fits that this year. Well, yeah. the, well, I mean, there is a game changing, um, offensive uh, tackle. It's, um... Cam Fleming, ex uh, ex Giant and Cowboy, probably yeah, forty five yeah. overall on that. So he's game changing, but he's uh, probably in the in, in, for, in for the, the negative bad, way yeah. rather than the. Uh... <laughs> oh no, no. Um, Greg Van Roden was a guy I, I was looking for. Uh, originally, I saw George Fan. I said, "Who's that guy that Jet fans all can't stand?" That it was Greg Van Roden. He's a horrifically awful offensive lineman. Yeah, I mean, last year this would have been the year because like Mike McGlinchey got paid, Jawan Taylor got paid, Orlando Brown got paid. Like that would have been the year. I mean, I feel like yeah. maybe, I mean, just because it's a weak class and teams will always need a tackle, I feel like Jonah Williams will get paid, um, especially that he's 26 years old as well. I mean, his market value is, um, what is it? It's, it was a decent amount. It was, I mean, 11 million, honestly, seems kind of low. Yeah, that's not, too. that's not bad. Joe Alta, too. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I said Joe Alta, too. Dude, honestly? And then we signed Kirk. It, it'd be that. like it'd be like the meme where it's like the, the, for the, the Joe Burrow Jamar Chase meme. I know. <laughs> um, I'm I'm cool like thinking that this team will pay like overpay for an offensive lineman. Like I'm cool that. Yeah. I mean, we could say we could just say on like kind of the the face value that like we'll sign either Connor Williams or Jonah Williams, but then we'll we could just write up. Connor Williams didn't he just tear his ACL? He did get hurt. I don't. He's a bad exactly. injury. That will probably affect how much he'll get paid if he's not going to play most of next year. And the commit, mm, I'm trying to. Yeah, see. torn ACL, so he's he's not gonna be ready for the starter next year because he tore it in December. Jesus. It'd be like Kyler. All right, so are we gonna say that we're just gonna pay Jonah Williams a ton of money? I'm fine. Yeah, with that. That, 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 that's that's what a team like this should do in this. Well, not should, but that's what they typically do in this situation. All right, so we're probably gonna make Jonah Williams. I mean, like I'm sure they're gonna have to overpay, especially if there's some other teams out there that are lobbying to get him that look a little bit better on paper, but. Yeah, I'm cool paying Jonah Williams, and we'll chalk up that they'll probably add maybe one or two other offensive linemen as well. Yeah, I'm okay. fine with that. But I, okay. the only problem with signing Jonah Williams, it kind of brings me back to the first point I made. The Bengals O-line, we just say, is always so bad. Why are we going to go out and sign the Bengals O-line? Like, don't get me wrong. He probably is the best guy here. But I feel like that's a little concerning that this is now the second position group that we know is bad, and then we're going to sign a player from that position group. Well, they signed... Uh... They signed Orlando Brown last year, right? Yeah, and they were still kind of bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. Um, but no, like I, I think they will go after. Like I'm not, I'm not saying let's not sign him. I'm just saying I feel like that's something we should keep an eye on just for like future references. Yeah, I feel like I don't know if I'm remembering it being Jonah Williams where he had to be asked to switch to right tackle, right? Or he had a because I think Orlando Brown in and he had to switch his tackle spot completely. Um, William shows or maybe teams instead of switching from left to right. Yeah. Yeah, he had a switch, basically. Because so yeah, he requested a trade back in March of last year. Yeah, so that's also why he's probably a little cheaper, because he's the right... He can only play right tackle. Yeah, so he can go back to his original position. So I feel like that's two notable splashes for the for the ownership group, at least on the offensive side with Pollard and Williams. Now, uh, we're going to have still a little bit more money to spend. I feel like we could probably make one big splash on the defensive side of the field. Um, I yeah. don't know... There's there's some good defenders here. Um, 
I don't know. I don't think this team is going to pay like a Chris Jones, maybe just because of his age specifically. And what do you want to really and go they, to watch? They have to... two older tackles are making a lot of money. Who yes. knows? Maybe he will get paid a ton of money. Um, Deron Payne and John Trout. Allen are both. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like this team definitely needs to add on. Who would they? Yeah, it's a good like interior. Do you think like Daniel line. Hunter want to go there if they gave him like too much money? Probably. I would think so. Edge. Yeah, and he was good last year. Um, he, was good last, he was very good last year. Um, I'm a, yeah. Like, Randy Gregory seems a little old. Carl um, Lawson, maybe. Randy Gregory's washed anyway. <laughs> jo oh, no. I was going to say Josh Allen, but he's definitely getting tagged or at least resigned. Romeo Aquara. That, that could be a good look. Mm -hmm. Why um, not just bring Chase Young back? Right? New ownership. I don't know. They don't know anything there. about it. <laughs> no, nah, no way. He's coming back. <laughs> Damn, he's 24. That's crazy. He's going to hit unrestricted free agency. Um, yeah, I'm cool. I would be cool giving Daniel Hunter a big deal. I mean, you're going to get him until his like, early 30 years, and I feel like edge rushers age a little bit better than some other guys. Yeah. Well, we, we could always entertain the uh, the yearly Yannick Ngakwe, um, ridiculously big contract that he signs to prove a deal like in August. Yeah. that's I call that the Jadavion Clowney. It's, they're both very similar. <laughs> what do we think about Leonard Williams? I feel like Seattle's not bringing him back. Well, I think I don't know. I don't. I don't know what it was going to want to go back to the. End. I think he wants to go to a contender. Um. All right. Well, I, mean, well, I guess he can go to. The, he, I, I don't see him going to the. Eagles. What about Davenport? Yeah, was. Marcus Davenport. Oh. He's slightly younger. That might be more appealing to Washington. But I feel like Minnesota probably could because if Daniel Hunter is going to be gone, they're going to want to keep Davenport. Wait, am I tripping? Are we talking about? Oh, never mind. I thought Davenport was on the Saints. He what? He got traded. He was. Yeah, never mind. I forgot something. about that. Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like the names of either Daniel Hunter, Carl Lawson, Leonard Williams. Maybe Davenport, um, Zadari Smith, maybe a little bit older. I, I don't think he would want to go there. Um, I feel like it's got to be one of those names if they're going to make a big splash on like an edge rusher. I mean, I yeah. feel like we've gone through the guys we've signed so far, I don't think are commanding too much money. So we're looking at a point where this team probably still has half their cap available. I say let they're probably going to go hard to make a big splash. Why don't they go out and just sign Daniel Hunter? Like, I don't know if he would necessarily want to go play for Washington, considering he's 30. I feel like he might want more of a more known contender than taking a chance on Washington. But if they offer him, you think, four for 100? Like, 25 mil seems, I think that's probably close. That might be a little bit of an overpay, but... Yeah, yeah because they're, they're, putting his, they're putting his market value at three for 60. I think I can see him getting, like, four for between 85 and 100. Yeah, because if, yeah. if you get Daniel Hunter, you're getting him, Darren Payne, and then um, uh, who's the other Jonathan Allen. You're getting? And Jonathan Allen. You get those three on your front three. Like, you're, you are sh you should get more sacks this year for sure by doing that. I agree. I I'm cool with signing Daniel Hunter. You might have to overpay to beat like out yeah. some other teams, but I'm cool with it. I, th I, th I think that could be our splash. That could be our big free agency splash. Okay. Um, I feel like now that we left, uh, or we let uh, kind of fall our walk, we got to add another corner. We signed Cameron Crow back, but I feel like another corner's got to kind of be here. Um, Tom, what do we think about Adoree Jackson? Is he going back to the Giants? I hope not. Um, but no, I think uh, he's probably going to wind up. Um, I don't know. Maybe he could go to the, the Washington. That, that's, that's, I, I could see him there. He's not that great anymore, but <clears throat> he can... He could he could be he can be a decent corner too, so that actually could be a, a pretty good uh, look there. Yeah, I think like a Dory Jackson, maybe Sean Sean Bunting, maybe Rockus Sin, like one of those guys they could just kind of add that are kind of veterans, kind of not, but like they could probably look to like maybe have prove it deals in Washington. Yeah, yeah I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine with any of those guys. Yeah, we could get a Jeff known Okuda. stud Jeff Okuda. Yeah. Did he do huh? anything this season? I think yeah, he so. the, the Falcons traded for him, and he was like not great. I thought he was okay, maybe not. Uh, yeah. I thought Some I heard tackles. good things about him. Um, <laughs> what are you? They're putting him at uh, apparently he's he, apparently he's gonna make fifteen million dollars, which I don't. I mean, I don't. Steven know. Nelson was really good for the Texans, but he might. He actually, I think, will get paid by a contender. All right, I feel like we got to add a corner. Do we want to give them? Uh, anybody have a specific name they want to latch onto? 
Do you Honestly, think... give him Dory Jackson. I think I, I, I could I oddly see that. Yeah, he could follow the um, Landon Collins career arc. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. So we had a pretty notable free agency. We signed Tony Pollard, Jonah Williams, Daniel Hunter, and Adore Jackson. We'd expect them to probably sign uh, another offensive lineman, probably another linebacker, maybe a safety, maybe a veteran receiver. I mean, they have a lot of money. I feel like they're going to be spending a little bit as well. So uh, this team we kind of mentioned before has a ton of draft picks. Um, we'll probably draft like maybe four to five guys on uh, day one um, and day two. So we can go through that. I think we're pretty much all in agreement on who they will most likely get at two. Um, do you guys have any debate other than Drake May? Do you think like there's a good chance they take or they try to trade up for Caleb Williams, they get him, or is it pretty much Drake May at this point? Let's, I think we leave it at Drake May at this, at this point, just but for argument's sake, and I think that's probably what's going to happen. So, Yeah, mm-hmm. the, only, the only thing about uh, the second quarterback taken is I'm pretty sure right now Mel Kuyper's trying to tell everyone that Jaden Daniels is going to be the second quarterback pick. Which I think I've been been seeing that too. That would just throw everything in for a loop because that really would have that would really come out of nowhere, to be honest. Yeah, I guess it really wouldn't change too much. Then you would just think the Pats take May at three. Oh yeah, no, no. For from the draft perspective, I don't think it changes much. But it would just change Mm -hmm. everything that we thought we knew from the past like four ish Mm -hmm. months. We all just assumed Drake May would be two. He didn't really play himself out of it he didn't play himself into it he just kind of stayed neutral and we just assumed he'd stay there but i don't know that's that's very interesting to see how it's going to play out Mm -hmm. um all right so this is where it can get a little bit more interesting they have 36 and 40 i mean with also multiple uh day two picks they could definitely be a team that tries to trade up uh in the back end of the first round as well um i think there's some definitely some options for them um they're early in the second round i think they can go corner i think they can go receiver i think they can go tackle I mean, we just signed them one, but I feel like they could probably try to get somebody like a Tyler Gutton, like outside of uh, outside of um, Jonah Williams, who we just signed. Um, is there any names that are standing out for you guys here in the beginning of round two? I like Zach Frazier, go interior offensive line out of West Virginia. Um, any any specific names? Um, I think in in this, uh, I'm like simulating a mock, like following along as we're mm-hmm. going. And Drake May just went first in it, so I took Caleb Williams with Taylor. Love that. Um, <laughs> uh, I think since they have 36 and 40, they could always this this could be a spot where they try and trade one of them and like uh, acquire like a couple thirds or like future second, like whatever it may be. Um, but I think this is where since we already since we have him signing a corner, I would gonna say maybe like a TJ Tampa type player, but Zach Frazier actually does seem like a good look here because he's a center. They made the big pay uh, payday for an offensive lineman already, so I think I think um, Frazier could be a good pick here for thirty six. Yeah, Dom, do you think Chop Robinson would be here or like PFF? I know like some other outlets are lower on him. I feel like he could go in the first round. I don't know. So there's a few guys that I've seen be ranked. Um, very different across multiple sites. Like Tyler uh, Guyton, who you mentioned from Oklahoma, I've seen him mm-hmm. on many ESPN mocks from Mel Kiper, McShay, all of them. I've seen him go in like the top 20, and PFF mm-hmm. has him ranked so low. Um, I've seen, uh, yeah, you mentioned Chop Robinson. PFF has him way down at 48. I'm, I've seen him go in the first round. I kind of think he still will go in the first round. I'd be surprised if he goes at 48. That seems very far. Um, just and Kevin even Kinchins is like. For- 54 I'm he not, fell yeah, yeah he, he fell off wow we were we were mocking him in the 20s a few weeks ago yeah yeah i feel like if we go like interior line i do not mind like another safety pair him up with cameron curl um if we wanted to go Nubin or kitchens as well yeah or if you want to wait a little bit and um and if javon bullards could you could mm-hmm. probably get him in the third i'd probably say yeah um I think yeah, I, I, I like the I idea think, of going Fraser with one of those. Be named here, or yeah. fit wise. I like the, the, I like the Fraser pick too. Okay, and then the team picks four picks later. We'll assume they stay here. Do we like? Yeah. Do we like a receiver here? I was gonna say I was looking at a, um, a Donnie Mitchell. He could be a good one, mm-hmm. or Xavier Worthy. Like you know, which, whichever Texas you, you tend to like more. Maybe um, like Xavier Legend. I've seen here a, a lot of the uh, in a lot of the mocks that I'm doing. I think. You could say like, oh, get Tez Walker because uh, Drake May, but I saw uh, Tez Walker get locked up in the uh, the Senior Bowl refs, and it screams day three. Um, so I'm gonna uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna pass on on Tez Walker there for receiver. 
Yeah, I like. I'm cool with any uh, of the Texas receivers. I don't really have a specific one that I prefer. Um, I wonder if like, I wonder if like Troy Franklin would fall to the first round. I doubt Brian really? Thomas does. Really, like Keon Coleman? Think he'll still be there at this time? Yeah, he, he's another guy I've seen. Like Mel Kiper, McShay, they've had him again going mid twenties, which I think is. I feel like it's high because if you look at his college stats, they're not impressive. But if you watched him play, he definitely played better than his stats show. So that's one. He was nasty in the beginning of the year. I mean, he, he was he was getting a yeah. lot of hype, and then he just like kind of fell off into mid. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. Do we want to go for like a big receiver here or like a slot guy? Like Keon Coleman's pretty big. That would be Coleman. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, because Terry can kind of play either, but Dotson mm. I feel like is more of a slot guy already. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like I'm trying to think which one I'd prefer here because I feel like you'll. I feel like there'll be options at receiver here. I mean, sure. Xavier Leger could be because he's. I think he's probably a little better than um, six three. Yeah, then Keonko. Keonko is six four, but I'm looking at. Let me see Xavier Leger his stats. Is he, is he, is he a, I think he's an always declarer too. So he's like he yeah. fits that mold of like it's SEC, um, true early because he's a sophomore. I'm not sure how many. I'm, I'm not sure how many years he redshirted. Um, if he even did, let me say. Probably just one. I think he missed the. He should have missed the COVID if he's still considered sophomore. Yeah, no, he, this is his fifth year. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why PFS calling him a sophomore. He's a senior. <laughs> um, Interesting. Shout out to them. Yeah. I'm cool going with him though. Here. I, right. I, I think I think he could be good. He he was he was very solid last year. Even though. This is weird. Now you know it's, 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 it's he's got one year of of production and he's had like three hundred yards before this season. But I mean, you know what? I think I I, I liked him before going in, and I'm not gonna let a, a stat sheet. Yeah, don't don't change your mind. Box score. He you did this with change your mind. Yeah, once you once you make up your mind. He did this with Rattler too. What did he do on Spencer Rattler? True. When did I do that on Spencer Rattler? No, 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 no. He did this like, with Spencer Rattler. He put up these stats with Rattler. Imagine if he, yeah, imagine he had a real quarterback. How good he'd be. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with Legend here. I think, yeah. I think this could be a spot where he's in. I'm good with that. Damn. Okay. We'll go Legend there. Uh, so that means we'll, we'll make two more picks at 67. Uh, not too far. But then all the they way have down. They have to go. They have to go defense now because we just used yeah. three first picks with offense. You know, which you know, I'm, um, yeah, Dan which Quinn I'm is cool looking with. to get defense. I true, true. Um. All right, so if we're thinking at 67, do we want to go, I don't know, any any specific names, Dom? Edron Cooper out of a and Well, one, one guy like that they, I'm just looking at right now, Junior Colson from Michigan, yeah. because... Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he's good. One thing that's been brought to my attention, and I really have started to pick up on it this year, is nobody talks about linebackers, but when you look at all the teams that made deep playoff runs, you got Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw... On the Chiefs, you got um, Bolton. On the Lions, Jack Campbell, who everyone clowned them for. And on um, uh, Ravens. the Ravens with um, Queen and... Roquan Smith. Roquan. Like, the linebackers, nobody seems to talk about them. But if you have good linebackers, your team plays you need better. Anchor in the middle. And I'm taking a quick peek back at the commander's team. They have three linebackers under contract for next year, and they're all outside linebackers. So I think they might actually really need to get that uh that core that middle linebacker the quarterback of the defense so that might be a I guy like they that. look at here yeah all right let's go junior Colson. Right. he started three years at michigan too and it's a pretty good program to start at um lost, all right so he lost two games in those three years <laughs> <laughs> very true uh so our final pick at 100 i feel like I'm, I'm cool saying on defense i wouldn't even be opposed to adding another linebacker i mean we signed an edge rusher we assigned a corner as well. We could also go another corner if you guys if you guys think that's a viable option here. If you want to go safety, Spencer Rattler's available. If you want to double up on quarterback? RG, <laughs> another QB. Little, little RG three Kirk Cousins action. <laughs> we could maybe we'll we'll sign Jay Gruden as well. Let him just be the <laughs> defensive coordinator. <laughs> Why not? Um. All right. So I think yeah, we could look at another corner safety. Um. Maybe uh. So like I'd pick a hundred. I mean, we could look at Jerry Jones out of Forest State. We could look at Max Melton out of Rutgers. Wow. Well, bi well, Big Ten, Rutgers Big Ten, notable Big Ten. I don't know King King from Penn State. Yeah, I we just saw Kalen King. King now. I don't know what happened to him. He f he fell off a cliff if he's available this late. 
Yeah. I mean, he's three-year starter at Penn State. Um, Decent size, too. 5'11", 190. It's not bad. I'm cool going him. I, I, li I like him. Can you at 100? I mean... Yeah, if he's here, I think you got to take him. I'm surprised. He Something must have happened in the uh, uh, like pre-workouts and stuff, because he was supposed to be going in the second round. To have him fall this far is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, all right, that's pretty much that's a fun offseason because this team that has a lot of flexibility to do um, a lot in free agency and the draft due to them having a lot of cap space and a lot of picks. Uh, so we re-signed Cameron Curl. We signed Tony Pollard. We signed Jonah Williams. We signed Daniel Hunter. Probably had to overpay for the last two. Signed Adoree Jackson. Um, and then we drafted Drake May at two. Zach Frazier and Xavier Leggett in the round two. And then Junior Colson and Kalen King. Uh, two Big Ten defenders there in round number three. What do you guys feel? How many wins does this team with these additions and maybe throw in like another lineman, maybe a veteran receiver? How many wins does this team I think, they, next I think they could win six or seven games. They had four last year, right? It was yes. four and thirteen. Believe, yeah, yeah, four and thirteen. And they got two early, didn't they? Didn't they, didn't they go two and two or something to start? Uh, yes, I think they, they. I think they, uh, were two they and beat. One. No, they started. Yeah, they started off two and zero. Oh. They beat the Cardinals and Broncos. The and they went the two and, two, and they went two and fifteen or two and thirteen to end it. Yeah, yeah, um, basically. I mean, if Drake Hopefully May can play. play, if I mean, I'm not comparing Drake May to CJ Stroud, but if he can play like a. 80% of C.J. Stroud did as a rookie. If they get all these other pieces around them, this team could significantly improve. They're playing the fourth place schedule. And yeah. you have to assume if they can maybe steal one game from the Cowboys or one game from the Eagles, that definitely helps them more. They got to somehow, somehow beat the Giants. Can, yeah. Somehow can never steal a game from the Giants. They they got to they gotta figure that one out. Um, but hey, Dan Quinn kind of owns the Giants, so maybe that, it will change now. Perhaps. I'm looking at the commanders they play. Obviously the same division, and looks like they have the NFC South and the AFC North, Ooh, and then there are three. For. Yeah, uh, and then so and then it looks like their three division matchups are the Cardinals, the Bears, and the Titans, which they go into those games. Yeah, they definitely could. I, ooh, oh, that means we'll get to see. Caleb well, versus we'll, Drake we'll May. See Caleb versus May. Yeah. That that that'll be a that'll be a, a week eight Thursday night football matchup yes. when both teams are uh, two and five. One hundred percent. Um. Yeah. So that that was a fun off season, and yeah. Uh. We'll we'll see how they look kind of going into the twenty twenty four season. We hope you guys did enjoy. If you're watching on YouTube, let us know what you guys think the commanders should do in the off season, and let us know your thoughts on what we did for them. Uh, and if you could subscribe if you're not already and hit the like on the video, we'd really appreciate it. And if you're following on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, we'd also appreciate that and a rating and review over there as well. So we'll catch you guys in the next mocks off season, and we'll see you all there. Peace.